Let's welcome delegates Comptroller Peter Francho and President Weller. Yeah, Hi, folks. Hi, everybody. Mr. Comptroller, thank you very thank you. much for joining us this morning. We're really excited to have you here as one of a number of possible candidates for governor in 2014, and we certainly appreciate your service as the state comptroller. Thank you. We have three questions we want to ask you. Number one, tell us about how you see the future of Maryland and right. your vision for our state. Can you share with us your unique background, interests, and priorities for Maryland's future? Thank you, Betty, and uh, thank you particularly for not introducing me as a tax collector. Uh, <laughs> honored to be your comptroller. I'm delighted to be down here. Thank you for your support. Uh, my vision for Maryland, uh, Betty, frankly, is maybe I could just tell a quick story about John Andreic. Uh, he's a 15-year-old student in a uh, Anne Arundel Public School, I think it's North County. And he recently won the uh, National Intel $75,000 award for science. And uh, it caught my eye because, frankly, a year ago, a very dear friend of mine died of pancreatic cancer, which as you know, anyone who's been exposed to this with friends or family, it's a particularly tragic form of cancer, because when the symptoms appear, it's too late to do anything, and the person basically dies very quickly. Well, Jack, 15 years old, freshman biology student, came up with a early detection test for pancreatic cancer. So I called him in, won this $80,000 award. I called him into the office with his parents. It's 100 pounds, dripping wet, just a high school freshman. He said, I was in my biology class. We were studying antibodies. It clicked in my head that there was a connection with a popular mechanics article I'd read. I put the two together and I came up with this concept. My teacher helped me send it to 100 labs to get it tested. 99 of them said they weren't interested. One at Hopkins took the test and tested it. And it has been proven to be 100% accurate versus the current test, which is 20%. 33,000 times cheaper than the current test, cost three cents, and 450 times faster. I spoke to the Hopkins lab person, and I said, what's the significance? He said, well, do you think it was significant when Thomas Edison invented the light bulb? Because this young student out of your system has come up with something that in five to 10 years will revolutionize healthcare, because it's not just for pancreatic cancer, it's also for all forms of cancer. So, now, my vision is, is bright because of those types of students, but I'll tell you the reality right now is not as good. Last week I was in Hagerstown, Maryland, meeting with 400 great Marylanders who had been summarily laid off, pink slip by Unilever from the Hagerstown ice cream factory. And you can imagine the distress on their faces. They had worked for 15, 20, 25 years in this cold, damp, wet factory making ice cream for the, for the East Coast. They loved their jobs, but their pink slip companies moving to Tennessee. Here's the problem with Maryland right now. We have a great state, but we rank 42nd in the country in private sector job growth. We rank 47th in the country in private sector wage growth. 
We have significant economic problems, not on the public side, Betty, although all of you have complaints, I know, about pay and employment, etc. But you have jobs. The private sector is hammered right now. We need to restore the prosperity of the private sector. And part of my vision is to do that by a two-year moratorium on tax increases, fee increases, toll increases, anything that takes money out of consumers' pockets, because we're a consumer-driven state, and we need to have that money funding new small businesses. Second, we need properly and honestly balanced public budgets so we don't go through these famine and feast and crisis and crisis here. We need honestly balanced budgets. We need customer service injected into our state and local bureaucracies so that the private sector realizes that its risks are acknowledged, appreciated, and we help the private sector create jobs. Because it's only the private sector that will bring us back to prosperity. I'm a Democrat. I believe in my party's ideals. But I'm telling you, as your chief fiscal officer, it's the private sector. And then finally, quickly, I've been a huge champion of financial literacy uh, for young people. Absolutely believe that we need to have that taught to all of our young people. I've done this in my own agency of 1,100 people. Uh, we cut our budget by $3 million last year. We're doing a better job of in this tax season. It can be done. You can improve government and use money efficiently. And secondly, I've told my 1,100 employees it is a fireable offense if they drag their feet in dealing with members of the public. We're there to serve the public. We're there to help the public. And uh, I'm glad to say, over six years, everybody's responded. Let me, if I could, just comment on the second question I know you're going to ask, Betty, about where I've worked with uh, educators. Um, uh, and, and let me just say, in addition to the economic reforms that I mentioned with the fiscal issues, we need political reforms. Because here's what happens in Annapolis. I served there 20 years. They're wonderful people, many of my colleagues. There's so much power concentrated in such a small area that is subject to abuse. Decisions get made in the smoke-filled back rooms that are not in the public interest. Example number one this year is uh, question five on the referendum, congressional redistricting. We have become the poster child in Maryland, nationally, for gerrymandering that is not in the public interest, may be good bare-knuckle pol partisan politics, but it's wrong for the public interest. If you look at those maps, uh, please, they speak for themselves. The picture is worth a thousand words. Vote no on five. The second issue, same thing, smoke-filled back rooms, absolute power produces something that's not in the public interest. That's question seven, expanding gambling. Please vote against that. Even if you love gambling, vote against that. Because that represents, thank you, that represents the essence of abuse of power in smoke-filled back rooms where casino owners get tax breaks, we get tax hikes, and uh, Sin City is brought into Maryland. So please vote against both of those questions. Thank you. And then, uh, if you have trouble remembering that, it's 57 varieties of Heinz. Question five, no. Question seven, no. Uh, finally, let me just comment on my favorite teacher, Ms. Jensen. Uh, uh, I, I got to be candid. I had a total crush on her, uh, as most fifth graders do, I think. But she helped me understand arithmetic. She helped me understand math. I wasn't a very good student, but she helped me focus and understand that it's that focus that will get you uh, well down the road. And now, here I am, your comptroller, and obviously, arithmetic that she taught me is super important. So thank you all very much for uh, listening. Betty, thank you for thank the you, uh, interview. Do I have any time left? You have one minute.
Well, I have one minute, but I just want to come back to Jack Andreic, that young student. And I want to thank each of you for what you do with your students, because Jack couldn't have made this enormous breakthrough without the support of his ninth grade uh, biology teacher. And um, 10 years, 15 years from now, we're going to see some exciting, unbelievable developments by the students that you're teaching. And so thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for your great uh, service. I've visited 140 schools, more than any other politician in the state, uh, and I've seen the work that you do uh, up front and close, and thank you all very thank much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Great seeing you.